from above, the ocean looks empty. Like a desert made of water, it seems barren, uninhabited. But that's just on the surface. Come below the waves with me as we explore the riot of color and life that exists on the coral reefs. Coral reefs are only found in shallow tropical seas. They may look like colorful rocks or even plants, but coral is really an animal. Coral is built by polyps. Polyps are very small creatures that are related to jellyfish. Unlike jellyfish, which propel themselves around water, coral are stationary. They grow together in a colony called a coral head. A small piece of coral may be made of hundreds of polyps. A bigger one may have thousands. Hard coral creates the reef by secreting calcium carbonate or limestone, a type of rock, which gradually builds up into a solid structure. Coral grows slowly, only a few centimeters a year. It can take hundreds of years to form large pieces like this. Of course, not all coral is hard. Some types are soft. They may look like fans, bushes, or feathers. But once again, it is really a colony of tiny animals living together. When many corals grow close together, it's called a reef. Reefs provide very important habitat for fish and other creatures. Coral provides shelter for little fish, a place to hide. That many small fish in one place attracts big fish, which in turn attracts big predators like sharks. This nurse shark is unusually active for the daytime Usually, a nurse shark will hide under ledges or in crevices of the reef and come out at night to eat dormant fish that are hiding in the coral. Nurse sharks are slow-moving bottom dwellers and, for the most part, harmless to humans. Although they can grow up to 14 feet, more than 4 meters in length, their strong jaws allows them to crush shellfish and even coral, if need be, but they prefer to eat shrimp, fish, and squid. The reef also provides a place for algae and sponges to grow. This provides foods for a variety of creatures, for example, the sea turtle. The hawksbill sea turtle, like most other kinds of sea turtles, is endangered. Hunted for their meat and for their shells, trapped in commercial fishing nets, or drowned and sickened by pollution, their populations are declining. These turtles rely on the food that grows on the coral reef, and the reef in turn relies on the turtles. It's a partnership that benefits both creatures. The turtle gets a reliable source of food. The reef system gets a less obvious advantage. Without the turtles coming to eat the algae and sponges, they would overgrow the reef, preventing the coral from growing and expanding. With lowered turtle populations in oceans worldwide, the health of coral reef systems will suffer. It is important for people to do our best to protect these peaceful reptiles, but not for their sake, but for the health of the entire coral ecosystem. Turtles and corals are the only partners you can find on the reef. There's one more unusual pairing we're going to talk about today. Can you guess what parrotfish and beaches have to do with each other? Parrotfish are a distinctive family of fish species with a tough, 
a bony beak so strong that they can bite through rock and coral. They do this so that they can eat the coral polyps and algae inside. The coral is ground up and all of the edible parts are digested until only the limestone remains. Then the parrotfish has to get rid of all of the crushed limestone and there's only one way to do that. The parrotfish will excrete or poop out the limestone which has been crushed into a fine sand. In this way, a single parrotfish can produce 200 pounds or 90 kilos of sand every year. You heard that right. The next time you bury your toes in soft white sand at the beach, just remember you're making castles from fish poop. That's not all they do. Coral also controls how much carbon dioxide is in the ocean. And they take the carbon dioxide out of the water and use it to build their calcium carbonate skeletons. Without coral, the amount of CO2 in the water could affect the whole planet, but luckily they're trapped in the stone for all of us. And if the housing species look awesome and saving the planet wasn't enough, coral reefs alter how the oceans affect the shore. Because they build up over millions of years and can survive in warm, shallow waters as well as colder, deeper waters, reefs can span massive areas and undulate like mountain ranges. They can build themselves to withstand typhoons, hurricanes, and other tropical storms and therefore buffer the shore against waves, storms, and floods. These tiny animals evolved long before we did, and their existence in areas like Australia, Florida, can prevent loss of life, property damage, and erosion by tempering the rushing ocean. Coral reefs are sometimes called the rainforest of the sea. Though they cover only a tiny area of the ocean, they provide a habitat for a quarter of ocean animals. Today, coral are in trouble. Because coral are so sensitive to water temperature, global warming slash climate change, ocean acidification and commercial fishing are all beginning to kill of all these tiny animals. In fact, when the animal is stressed, they release their symbiotic colorful algae into the water, turn white and die. Which is why it's important to think of coral not as pretty rocks, but as living things like a dog or an elephant. A new 42 year study of coral has found we've only got about a sixth of the coral left on our planet, with the Caribbean losing 50% of their coral since 1970. But all hope is not lost. The parrotfish might be the coral savior. Where parrotfish live, coral are thriving. Fortunately, there are some simple things we can do to help protect the coral reefs. Be careful not to waste water or pour chemicals down your drain since eventually the water you use will reach the ocean and can increase pollution. Pick up trash that you see on the ground and recycle what you can so the garbage won't find its way into the water. Most importantly, make sure people know that you want to protect the coral reef so that when we make decisions about how to take care of our world, we will make choices that will protect the reefs. I hope you learned something new exploring the reef with me today. Goodbye until next time.